So, why are Conservatives obsessed with property? Indeed, the middle classes of Middle England are really quite obsessed with property and property prices. Well, we're going to look at three key areas here. The, what, why, why is property important for Conservatives? The Conservative view of property and policy implications. Now, for, for many Conservatives, property rights are crucial and are to be defended um, because they would argue that attempts to redistribute, uh, even though the distribution of property may be arbitrary, could actually threaten the whole institution of private property itself. Uh, for many Conservatives, of course, in the 18th and into the 19th century, defending land is particularly important. But of course, there are many different forms of property. You know, you, your phone or your personal possessions are property. But we're mainly talking about physical property and land here. Um, Roger Scruton talks of uh, man or woman's absolute and ir irradicable need of private property. And indeed, Hegel talked about, talked about property rights being essential to people to achieve their full individual freedom. So property is ra rather an important concept for conservatives. And indeed, conservatives think that private saving and thriftiness to save up to buy property, for example, is a virtue, as is share ownership, for example, which is, um, you know, financial assets, of course. So why, why this obsession, why this keenness to defend property rights? Well, well, first of all, perhaps because property for an individual and for a family provides security. It's something to fall back on. I remember the conservative view of the world, realistic, but there may be trouble ahead. We live in an uncertain world with an uncertain future. You have something to fall back on if you have your own private property. Of course, as long as those property, property rights are safe. Number two, it gives an individual, a family, a stake in society. Um, it provides those that own property are likely to respect other people's properties, are likely to be a law abiding. So it's part of the fabric of society to maintain law and order and stability because you have a stake in society, something you, you can see if you look at the 1832 um, Act in terms of who can vote in elections. Um, and then thirdly, um, people sort of realise themselves through their home, through their wonderful decoration, through their garden, um, and so um, things like burglary are seen really as, as a violation of people's personal private space, almost a violation of themselves, because the, the, the place is, is not just a physical property, it is a home, a um, slightly different concept. And of course the key thing is something that can be passed on to one's children or, or to others down a family line. Um, however, for conservatives, unlike liberals perhaps, rights come along with duties and obligations so that people have a, a duty really to preserve and maintain their home for future generations. If you are lucky to have a Georgian rectory, and who wouldn't want one of those? Well, you then have a duty and a responsibility to maintain that, to maintain and look after the wonderful Georgian features, for example, um, to maintain your garden. So if you let your garden fall into disrepair, or your property fall into disrepair, think of what it's doing to the neighbourhood. You're letting the neighbours down. Um, so you have, a, you have a responsibility there and property rights do indeed come with um, obligations for conservatives. So let's, let's look at the policy implications of this. Um, what's really happened since 1945 in Britain and to an extent the States is the, the idea of widening and extending property ownership. The obsession with property is a particular British obsession, you might say, compared to countries of Germany or France, where people rent to a greater extent. However, um, Eden 
in the 50s wanted to create a property owning democracy. Um, Thatcher, of course, wanted to create a share owning democracy, and Thatcher was rather pleased that there were more shareholders by the end of her reign, if we call it that, by 1990. There were about 9 million people that owned shares in the United Kingdom. That's more than there were trade unions by 1990. And, of course, um, through much of the post-war period, there was a subsidy for private ownership of property, which the Conservatives were particularly keen on, and Labour perhaps didn't get, dare get rid of. Um, of course, it was eventually got rid of in the late 80s. But um, a key, key aspect of factorism was perhaps the right to buy. So if you owned, well, if you lived in a council house, you had the right to buy it. And one million were sold at pretty good prices um, to their owners. Um, my friend Kathy, for example, got a pretty good bargain uh, when she bought her council house in central London. Um, of course, the corollary of this is we now have a shortage of, of social housing, and the private landlords will therefore receive housing benefit that the taxpayer and the state now pays for because we, of course, have a huge shortage of council homes. Um, so policies can have consequences further down the line. Anyhow, uh, a more recent version of something a little like this was uh, Osborne's help to buy, help people to get onto the housing ladder. Um, so, of course, for Conservatives, death taxes and inheritance taxes on properties such as those um, ramped up by Lloyd George in the People's Budget of 1909, um, or, or Labour's talk of death taxes in 2015, um, the, these, these are particularly inimical to Conservatives. And of course, George Osborne uh, managed to cause a few problems for Gordon Brown by um, changing the threshold for inheritance tax, for example. So, uh, on the opposite end of spectrum, of course, we have the Communist Manifesto um, that would like to abolish private property, and Sir Thomas More, in his Utopia, would equally like to abolish private property. Um, and the liberal view is, well, you get your property based on your merit. Well, I think the English and the Conservatives are going to continue with their obsession with property, uh, which you can see in magazines such as Country Life, which are sometimes described as property porn. If you look at the front pages, full of the most wonderful properties and lovely photographs inside the magazine of properties. And I've asked likely to continue for some time. Thank you for listening.